Fate comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You're listening to The Moment of Power with Azano Eddie Thompson. Daily audio devotions to energize your day presented by the Advent Hero Ministries. Our moment of power topic today is lessons from the Exodus part 23, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosa, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb ass, speaking with man's voice, forbade the madness of the prophet. Second Peter chapter 2 verses 15 and 16. Balaam was a prophet of God. He was a man that God had honored with the office and the gift of prophecy. He was a man God was using and was widely known. As at this time the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt and they were traveling to the promised land and because of the way God delivered them from Egypt and uh, opened the Red Sea for them to pass and all the nations they have defeated, Balak, the king of the Midianites, decided to go and call Balaam to come and curse the people of God. And when the messengers arrived and told him what they wanted him to come and do, he did the right thing by saying he wanted to go and pray. And then he spoke to God, but the answer of God to him was that he shouldn't go because those people were his people, were the people of God, and they could not be caused and they should not be caused. In spite of a clear answer of God, Balaam went to the people and told them that his God said he shouldn't go. And then when they promised him money and gold and all of those kind of things, He came back again and spoke with God. And he prayed. He said, God, should I go? God had already spoken his mind to Balaam. And Balaam's prayer at this point was useless. God knew that the prophet is now beginning to change his mind because of the money, because of what the Bible called filthy lucre. And so Balaam took his donkey and started heading for where he should go and do what God asked him not to do. While he was going, an angel actually stood in his way. The prophet was now blind, blind with the wages of unrighteousness. And he couldn't see the angel. He couldn't see the angel that was standing in his way. But the donkey saw the angel and the donkey was trying to dodge the angel. And the angel would stand in the way and the donkey fell and crushed the knees of the prophet and Balaam became angry, took up his whip and started beating the donkey. That was when the donkey spoke and said, have I done this before? Do I do this to you? And the angel said, if not for the donkey, you would have died. In spite of all of that divine manifestation of an angel to stop him on his tracks, his tracks to destruction, Balaam after he recovered from that encounter, continued on his journey. And that's why Peter says in this list that he had become mad, a mad prophet. And he had loved the wages of unrighteousness. And so he went. And after he couldn't curse the people, he did something strange. Because the Bible tells us in Numbers chapter 22 and 23 that the children of Israel could not be cursed because there is no iniquity in Israel and because God was with them. God turned the cause into a blessing. When he couldn't cause them, he knew the reason why they could not be caused. And so he told Balak that Balak should do something to get them to sin. How do I know this? I know this because of a statement that Jesus made to John while talking to the church of Pergamos. Revelation chapter 2 verse 14, quote, But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. 
unquote. So Balaam was the one that told Balak to lure the children of Israel to sin. He sent some Midianitish women into the camp of the Israelites who acted friendly at first and were able to lure the men of Israel to the plain of Shittim where, where they went to worship Baal Peor. And as they were doing that, the plague broke out and about 23 to 24,000 souls died that day. That was because Balaam had done his foul work. He was now working for the devil. He started out by working for God. We need to pray today that we will not be like Balaam because temptation is going to come our way one way or the other in your office. Bribe is going to come, money that should be given to the poor, money that should be used to develop this school, money that should be used to build roads and all of that. Somebody's going to say that this money should be shared. And will you love the wages of unrighteousness than the development of a country, of a state? Are you part of those who would not build the roads and they are actually spending on themselves blood money? Because whenever people die in those roads, it's because those people did not do that road. Are you going to be like a pastor who doesn't know, who has forgotten that God has called him to preach the truth and to stand for the truth? Are you going to love the wages of a righteousness? Are you going to be bribed by position and money and things like relevance and all of that? Let us pray that God may deliver us from the doctrine of Balaam, from the lifestyle of Balaam, so that we can be God's people. Our Father in heaven, we give you glory today. We worship you. Many people are losing their calling because of the spirit of Balaam, because they have adopted the doctrine of Balaam, the philosophy of Balaam. Balaam had put money, he had put wealth, he had put relevance, he had put this world ahead of God. And he had joined himself with the enemy to lure and teach the people of God to sin. After he told Balak that he should cast a stumbling block on the way of the children of God, he was the one that went to the children of Israel and persuaded them that they could go and worship with the Midianites, which caused destruction, which eventually also caused the death of Balaam, who died in the battle between the Israelites and the Midianites. Lord, help us today and bless us. Help us not to end up in ruin because of the love of money. Help us to be faithful to our calling, even as a church and as your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.